100,000 people are packed into Glasgow's Ebrox Stadium. In the centre are the royal days, the massed bands, the trumpeters, the guard of honour. Such is the brilliant opening scene as their majesty's carriage drives round the arena. It is a scene that challenges comparison with all the great exhibitions of the past, with Wembley, with Glasgow in 1888. Yet already in the opening hour of this big show of 1938, as their majesties are greeted by Lord Elgin, the president of the exhibition, the one word for it is success. For success is the keynote of the opening speech by His Majesty the King. The Queen and I are very happy to be in Scotland once more. We shall see today the completion of a great scheme whose inception we saw when we were last in Glasgow ten months ago. The exhibition is an empire undertaking, but we do well to remember that it owes its origin and to a great extent its execution to the people of Scotland. I have spoken first of Scotland but I am well aware that without the generous help and support of the rest of the empire, this exhibition would not have been possible. And confident as I am that this great exhibition can make a real contribution to the general well-being, Trumpets sound, the flags unfurl, and two squadrons of RAF planes dip in salute. And again, a hundred thousand voices are raised as their majesties drive to the exhibition to begin their four-hour tour of the park where the empire has strung like so many pearls, the beauties and riches of the British Commonwealth of Nations. From the main entrance, their majesties drive to the British government pavilion, outstanding in its shape and size, even more impressive inside. It has four exhibition halls, devoted in turn to the Fitter Britain campaign and the three great national basic industries, coal mining, iron and steel and shipbuilding. Along Dominions Avenue are ranged the main exhibits of the Dominions and Colonies. The fluttering flags and glistening fountains make this the glory of the exhibition. The Canadian pavilion is dominated inside by a map of the Dominion 600 feet square in burnished copper. They call it Sunlit Australia. It presents a complete picture of the growth of the Commonwealth. At this point in their tour, their majesties separate, the Queen going to the woman's section of the exhibition, His Majesty to the Palace of Industry. But above all, the park is dominated by the great 300-foot tower, and from it our cameraman looks down on the Scottish pavilion and avenues of ant-like visitors. Meanwhile, the Queen is at the Fashion Theatre. Later, their majesties drive by car to the Palace of Art, but before going inside, they inspect veterans of the great Glasgow exhibition of 1888. Inside the palace, their majesties see the busts of his late majesty King George V and her majesty Queen Mary. After lunch in the royal suite, they visit the Clachan village, a perfect representation of the rural life of the Highlands. They greet Mrs. Morrison, who is 85 years old, comes from the Outer Hebrides and demonstrates the centuries-old art of Scottish spinning. So the Great Exhibition receives its royal send-off, the show that glorifies the British character, the British spirit and determination, the British will to win. It is not enough that we should possess all these. We must tell the world about them, and that's Scotland's job at Bella Houston Park. <laughs> 